Come on. Ooh. Come on, watch. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noelle and today we're going to talk about the Fitbit Versa. The Fitbit Versa is um, Fitbit's lightest smartwatch yet. Um, they introduced it here in the Philippines around um, towards the end of last month. And uh, I was at the launch event, so they offered to let me review a device. And I chose the special edition device, which had a lavender woven band and a rose gold case around the watch um, the other the regular edition is um, black case with a black band a silver case with a gray band and a rose gold case with a peach band the other special edition watch is a charcoal woven band with a graphite case now the regular edition Fitbit Versa retails for 13,890 pesos and the special edition retails for 15,590 pesos but the thing is with the special edition band you also get a black um, rubber or um, yeah plastic band which I've found during the course of my testing this Fitbit Versa I've found that this rubber wristband is um, it's better suited to a more active lifestyle and so I'm gonna take you through everything that I, I saw in this watch um, the things that I've noted the things that I loved and probably think that might need improvement as well so watch this you might have noticed from my previous review of a Fitbit, the Fitbit Ionic, that I was coming at it from the point of view of a dedicated athlete or somebody who is really, really serious and into sports. But what Fitbit's done here is that they're addressing a different segment of the market and that's the, um, the lifestyle athlete. It's, it's somebody who isn't necessarily into tracking um, how fast their split was or how how long they run or something like that it, this is more of the person who likes to get their exercise in but also has a life outside of sports or or exercise um, maybe a person who who likes exercising who likes sitting in the gym but um, probably would also have a lot of use for a smart watch and that's exactly what this Fitbit Versa is. It's a smartwatch for somebody who also likes being active. And you might find it has a lot of things in common with the Ionic. So I'm just going to put the review of the Ionic up here in the little corner. You can click on that or you can click on the um, description box below. The Versa and the Ionic actually work off the same OS. So what they told us at the launch was that um, the OSS, the different Fitbit um, bands that are available, they work kind of in priority to one another. So the Fitbit, Ionic, and the Versa are like the top tier. And then you go down a little bit and it's the Charge 2. And then down a little bit more and it's the Alta HR and down and down and down. And so um, um, if you have several different Fitbit devices, syncing to one account uh, it will share the step counts uh, presuming of course you're just wearing one on your wrist then the step counts are shared across all devices so you're not going to be duplicating any recording or whatever um, but you can only use the Ionic or the Versa you can't use both under one account since they share the same OS, they've undergone a few upgrades since my previous review. Um, this latest upgrade included quick replies um, for Android smartphones. So if your watch is connected to a smartphone via Bluetooth, your watch can get notifications about messages. But you can um, just use the watch, tap on it, and quickly reply to any of these messages using stock templates. Another upgrade in this OS is the female health tracking. So a lot of women use um, notebooks, calendars, and whatnot to track their menstrual um, to track their menstrual cycle. Yeah. 
Um, I personally use an app on my phone. I actually have maybe two or three years worth of menstrual cycle data stored in that app. So what Fitbit wants to do is it wants to start tracking your menstrual cycle and hopefully be able to draw correlations and links to um, the other stuff that it tracks for you like your exercise, your sleep, your dietary habits, etc. Um, Fitbit encourages you to record not just your menstrual cycle but also your um, the symptoms when you're actually menstruating or even just things like mood you can track throughout the month and you can see or hopefully they're they're gonna try to see if this um, of, if all of this comes together and shows a kind of trend so it's really interesting um, this has just been implemented in the latest update so it's kind of a little late for my review but I'm interested in seeing how it goes on from here I know a lot of other women are also interested in in tracking their menstrual health their their reproductive health this way Another thing that I really liked with the OS update is the on-device dashboard for easy access to the health and fitness data. So previously, all of this data like number of um, number of calories burned, uh, I think um, number of floors, etc. You could access it on the watch, but it all kind of came together only on the app when you opened it on your phone, and so. If you see this, the Versa right now, if you swipe up, if you swipe up, then you see today and then you see all of the things that you've done for the day. There you go. So I've burnt 897 calories and then I'm going to scroll up and you're going to see workout. So that was yesterday's workout. Um, what else is on this? I think you can see heart rate as well. Yeah, so that's your day, your workouts at a glance. And from there you can also swipe to see previous workouts. I think you can swipe, okay, for heart rate you can swipe across. Uh-huh, see other data that's relevant. And um, for calorie burn, you can swipe across, see the other stuff, the steps, etc. So yeah, now having all of that information available on your watch as well as your phone makes it so much easier to understand what's kind of what's going on in your day and um, to remind yourself to, to get more active if you need to. Uh, another thing that was updated on the OS was um, the usage of music on the watch because previously in my previous review I think um, I was only able to explore uploading music files directly onto the watch in the Ionic. Um, so after I, I reviewed the Ionic they updated the OS um, to include access to streaming services like Deezer. Actually Deezer is the partner for Fitbit. I think I mentioned in that review that I was kind of disappointed that they also did not, did not have a partnership with Spotify because I know a lot of people in the Philippines are more Spotify oriented. Um, so we've built up like playlists and it's kind of hard to port those playlists over from Spotify to Deezer and in addition to be able to download files or streaming songs from Deezer to be played offline you need to have a subscription a paid subscription but uh, Fitbit kind of eases that transition a little bit by including a two or three month subscription free of charge with Deezer so what I did for this review is that I set up a Deezer account and um, I started syncing songs from Deezer's own um, mixes. So it, they had a, a gym mix, a run mix. And what I really liked when I was syncing those things is that the watch wasn't actually connected to the phone and then using the phone's connection to download things. Instead, 
I was able to connect this watch directly to the internet and sync the files directly from Deezer into the watch. No phone intermediary required. So that was pretty cool and it made the whole download process a lot quicker and I was able to play playlists on this watch almost immediately. Um, I think I downloaded a gym mix and a running mix onto this watch like the night before I ran the Nash, Nat Geo run. Yeah? Um, the one thing is that it doesn't have its own speaker. Ooh. This has to be waterproof so of course it's not going to have its own speaker. But you can connect pretty much any Bluetooth speaker or earphone or whatnot to this. So I used my Under Armour JBL. Uh, wireless earphones with it and it worked a charm and um, yeah I've, I've done that since. So another thing that uh, I was able to use on this round of, um, of trials is the Fitbit Coach. So the Versa comes with like a little application in there that um, and it preloads like three if you see here on this screen. All right, so we're going to tap on the star. That's the Fitbit coach. And you're going to see here there are workouts that are preloaded. And these are all guided workouts. So um, you're going to be able to see the kind of movements that you're required. You're going to see how many reps or how many seconds you're required to do this movement. If your earphones are connected, then it gives you a little beep as you go through the exercises. If not, the watch itself has a vibrate mode to tell you to move on to the next one. I've done a few of these um, workouts already and you can actually, I think you can update which workouts you want to save on the, on the watch itself. And you can even create your own personalized workout in, this, in the latest update to the OS. You can also swim with the Fitbit Versa, which it shares in common with the Ionic. And um, it has what they call smart track swim tracking with water resistance up to 50 meters. The main difference between the Versa and the Ionic is that the Ionic had an internal GPS tracker while the Versa needs to connect to your phone to use the phone's GPS. This is what Fitbit calls its connected GPS and it's used this technology in previous devices like the Charge 2 in my experience. It's got a 4-day battery life which um, is just a hair off the Ionic's 5-day battery life. Just looking at the Versa. This is, like I said, it's Fitbit's lightest smartwatch, so it's it's really light and it's got a very small footprint. If you'll notice, it's quite thin. And then on the wrist, it, on a female wrist, it's um, just right. The size is just right. It's not too bulky, which I found the Ionic to be slightly, but I, I forgave it in the Ionic because um, I was uh, I was coming at it from the point of view of having previous sports GPS watches which were really bulky on the wrist and the Ionic was kind of a sleek uh, a sleeker version of those things but the Versa really looks it's it's like a stylish wrist watch um, some of you may might know that Fitbit actually bought the company called Pebble um, a, a, a few years back and Pebble was a very stylish um, uh, fitness tracker for its time um, and a lot of people who used Pebble back then have commented that the Fitbit Versa has taken that form factor of the Pebble and given it Fitbit's uh, ecosystem of apps and um, software. I think it could be marketed primarily more towards women but I think men could also appreciate this kind of sleek form factor. So all in all it's a pretty solid lifestyle fitness watch. I love how it tracks uh, all of my workouts, my steps, my calories burnt, uh, I love how I'm able to customize the watch face so if you saw my little rainbow oh 
rainbow. So you saw that watch face. I love it so much and it I'm able to personalize it so that that is me or that's how I'm feeling this week. I love how with the special edition I get two bands but as I mentioned this rubber wristband is better suited to your sweating than the canvas woven one. You can use it like I did use it for maybe two out of the three weeks I've been testing this watch um, and it dealt with my sweat pretty okay except for the last week where it started getting funky and so I had to wash it. So that's just something you need to watch out for. I love its charging cradle because it's no longer just some magnet that, that sticks to the back of your watch that you can it could disconnect at any point when, when you kind of knock it around. It's it's got a little um, pincer type action. So it will hold your watch steady just like that. It doesn't come with a a butt. But you can use it in your USB charger, so you can use it with any kind of, you know, any kind of USB charger end that you have lying around. I think maybe the biggest issue that I had with this watch was the connected GPS because as everyone knows, connected GPS is not as accurate as a dedicated GPS for your watch. And so the two times I ran with it outdoors, uh, yes, the watch was able to record the distance, but when you look at the GPS data and the map, it doesn't have the entire shape of the route or it kind of ends in a weird place so it doesn't show parts of the run. So yeah, that was kind of like, it was it was the biggest bummer because I, I like when I run in places that I've never been, I like keeping those um, run maps as a sort of souvenir that I actually did run there. Anyway, I took photos so that doesn't really matter. Um, and I know that not a lot of people are kind of like me. Um, some people, they're just happy that the distance has been recorded. And yeah, the Versa is pretty good at recording the distance. I think it just estimates based on the number of steps you've taken and the average stride length you have or if you've been able to input your precise stride length for walking and running, then it's able to kind of estimate how far you've gone. Like I said, if you're a, a lifestyle athlete, somebody who likes exercising and likes being able to track their workouts, but you're not as obsessive about your data as some of us, you know, feeling athlete types are, then the Versa is just the right watch for you. I, I actually really love the form of the Versa. I really do. And yeah, the reason I wasn't able to come out with this review quite soon enough is because I was just enjoying my time with this watch. If you've had any experience with the Fitbit Versa or if you have any questions, please feel free to drop your comments down below. Or you can um, contact me on social media at Kikai Runner across almost everything. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat even. And I will be really willing to, um, to help you find out the information that you want to know. Again, the Fitbit Versa retails for 13890 for the standard edition and 15590 for the special edition which comes with two straps. Fitbit Versa, you can buy it off Fitbit.com um, and at major online retailers. So this includes Lazada. You can also find it at Digital Walker, Globe, Liberty, and runner. So that's it for this Fitbit Versa review. If this video was informative, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. The subscribe button is somewhere down there or you can click on this little guy here and I will see you again next time. Bye folks!